Good evening, everyone. So this is our video for project five, distance vector routing. And before I start, I must first uh, apologize for all the background noise. Uh, if you experience it, please do bear with me. So as you know, this is the PDF for the project. And what we are supposed to do is uh, take, a, a, take four routers connected in a ring topology, and we have to implement the RIP routing protocol. So for this project, this is my topology. I have four routers. They are connected to each other in such a fashion. And the routers have been named router one, router two, router three, and router four. And the cost between router one and router two is seven. The cost between router two and router three is four. The cost between router three and router four is one. And the cost between router four and router one finally is five. So take a look at this topology for a minute and we'll keep coming back to it uh, as in when we need to understand the output. And next I'm gonna head straight to my code. So this is the main code which implements a router class on which we, you know, through this class, we create each of these objects and we define how they'll behave. We'll define how they send their distance vector routes to each other, you know, their neighbors and how they create the table, update the table and make any changes for optimized routes. So this has six methods. So there's a create method. We just pretty print the tables. We make updates in the tables based on changes in you know, the routing information. We send wire sockets. We receive wire sockets. And finally, there's a backbone method of sorts that just starts the two threads and keeps it going on. And based on this class, we have four objects, router one, router two, router three, and router four. So, and just like the diagram, uh, we might come back to the code in order to explain the changes in the behavior. So now I'm gonna head straight to the terminal. And by the way, I'm executing all these four object codes as processes on my own PC, and they will be sharing information and passing information via different ports through sockets on the same machine. So the IP address of each machine is me. So it's the local host, right? And so what first I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire up router one. Then I'm gonna fire up router two. And I'm gonna fire up router three. So now, we can see that router one is, this is the starting table. This is the base table of router one. So it's connected to router four and router two. And going to the diagram, you can see that router one is connected to router four and router two. But right now what is happening is that router one, router two and router three are the only ones in action right now. Router four has not been you know, started, it's not on. So router two passes a message to router one with its own routing table. And if we see the routing table of router two, it has an entry for router one and router three because router two is connected to router three. So it takes this information, this, this link information and it passes this to router one. And router one before that did not know that a thing like router three existed on the network. So it learns about it. It adds the cost. It computes the cost seven plus four is equal to 11. And it adds router three to its table. So initially the table of router one was like this, but as soon as it learns from router two about router three, it makes that addition and it creates a new entry, which was not here. And it basically updates the table. And within the code, 
this is where we update the table that there was a new unseen entry and the routing table is uh, essentially uh, represented as a dictionary in Python. So we just make that addition, right? And we can see that the cost is 11. But if you look at the topology, we know that there's a cheaper route from router one to router three via router four. But for uh, like in order for that route to be discovered, router four needs to be on and active. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, do that and we'll see if the changes are made. So I go ahead and I start my router four. Now all my routers are on. So till recently router four was not on and there was no information of the new network. But as soon as I somewhere I uh, turned on router four. So now there is an update with regards to the information. So router four now finally uh, passes its information, routing information to router two. And now we can see that there's a change in the information of router three in the table of router one, <clears throat> such that the cost it's taking to go to router three is a cost of six. And the next hop is router four. As you can see, five plus one is six which is less than seven plus four, 11. So earlier the next hop was router two. And now the next hop for router one to get to router three is router four. And we'll just confirm that. So earlier, if the cost was 11, the next hop was router two, but now the cost is six and the next hop is router four. So now basically all my routers are on they are up and running. And similarly, for just like router one, each router, once they all exchange information with each other, now they are on the optimal paths. Now I'm going to demonstrate how my program you know, handles router failure. So again, this time I'm going to take router four and I'm going to kill it. So in my program, like the only way you can implement the router failure is through a keyboard interrupt. So I'm going to go ahead and do control C and I apologize for this uh, ugly message down here. Uh, for some reason, when I'm using threads in Python uh, and when there's a keyboard interrupt from within the thread, the thread is ignoring that exception. And I apologize for this message. It should have been handled more gracefully. So now once router four has been shut down, it's going to try four times. My program is going to, my receive method is going to try four times, you know, to check if a neighboring router is down. But after uh, the counter, you know, exceeds to four, there have been four times that, you know, there's a timeout on my socket of 2.25 seconds. If four times that happens, then I know that, you know, something is wrong and that, uh, that router, that link needs to be treated as essentially dead. So how we play dead here is we take a value router dot infinity. And in this case, it's 16 as per, uh, like as per RFC uh, of the RIP protocol. And we set it to infinity. Uh, once we do that, we can see after four iterations, router four is down and the path has been set to 16. Here is the change. And we're not changing the next hop, but essentially in my program, if it's 16, so it'll essentially be you know treated as dead. And one more thing is happening here that now since the cost to get to R3 from router four is prohibitively high, so it again reroutes to you know the path with, with router two. So let's go to the diagram. So this router now is dead. The path here, or the path cost is not five, it's infinity, which in our case is 16. It wouldn't make sense for router one to take this route anymore. So now it again, you know, it hunts for better options. But since this one, this router, router two is still alive and it's broadcasting, it's multicasting its uh, updates to router one uh, at an interval of one second. So it learns again that there is a path via router two to router three with a cost that is much less than, you know, infinity. It's just 11. So it takes this path again. And now you can see that router two is still down. We haven't 
shut it, uh, like we haven't turned it back on. So the path that is now being taken, four out of three, is the one with 11. And you know, uh, it's the next hop is out of two. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna demonstrate that once I bring router four back up, it's gonna start taking that optimized path again via router four. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn on router four again. Okay, so router on, we can see the message. Router four is on again and it's multicasting to router one and router three. So we see that the message router four is down because previously, you know, being displayed, we come down, that message is gone. And more interestingly, now we again have periodic updates from router four. So the earlier cost, if you remember, the earlier cost here was 11 and the next hop was router two. So that again has disappeared. That is because going back to the diagram, this thing is again alive and it's, you know, broadcasting its information, it's multicasting its information to router one and three. So one again learns that, okay, I was on a path here, through here, through router two, that was paying cost 11. But now again, there's a path that is, that has a cost less than six and it takes, and it utilizes this as the next hop. So it, you know, uses router four again. And this is how I'm implementing my routing and I hope you like it and thank you very much for your time.